let's begin. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Fro Thizzle in the building. And today I'm gonna be talking about the 2022 film, The Black Phone, starring Ethan Hawke and directed by Scott Derrickson. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. I'm a big fan of Ethan Hawke, and I love Sinister. When I heard the same team was making a new film with Ethan playing a bad guy slash killer, my anticipation rose even higher. And for the most part, I enjoyed the black phone. Ethan Hawke puts in a great performance, playing the grabber. There's a handful of unsettling moments that Ethan handles very well, but there were also tiny moments that I felt he was overacting a tad bit, personally. But don't get me wrong, he overall does a great job with his creepy voice and even creepier mannerisms. Mason Thames does a good job as Finn, the lead kid that gets abducted. He's a bullied, quiet character that I found myself rooting for. Madeline McGraw as Gwen is a big standout in the acting department. A strong performance from a talented child actor. Spoilers. There's a brutal child abuse scene involving Gwen, and I thought Madeline's acting in this scene was a realistic portrayal. I can see her getting way more roles after this film and maturing into a later career. James Ranson, who I previously enjoyed in Sinister as Deputy So-and-So, plays a guy named Max, and I thought he did a great job here as well. If anybody's close to the comedy relief in this film, it's definitely Max. He plays a goofy, cocaine-sniffing guy trying to investigate the grabber. The musical score is awesome. Very creepy and well done. Certain musical notes gave me some chills. My favorite thing about Sinister was the music. Despite having different composers, both of the scores felt very similar in a great way for me. Love, love the score. Opening credits were a 10 out of 10. I love the way it was edited together and the creepy music was a nice touch. The sound design was top notch in the theater for me, from a baseball getting hit by a bat to the sounds of blood dripping on the ground. I loved both the camera work and the editing. The dream sequences that are shown from Gwen were awesome, unnerving, and some of my favorite moments of the film. I did enjoy the black phone sequences and how the grabber's previous victims helped Finn get out of the situation. I also liked how some of the ghost kids looked some were more gruesome than others, and I like that the movie didn't hold back on that aspect. I did like how the audio of the ghost kids talking on the phone was synced up with how they were talking in person. I didn't love how the phone was beating like a heart. The CGI in those moments were distracting me. The biggest nitpick I have with this film, personally, is the cursing and the dialogue. I'm the last person to be talking about language, but when nearly every character's kind of talking like what I felt to be a Rob Zombie movie at times, it throws me off. Even felt weird to me with how the grabber started cursing. Like I said, I don't mind language in my movies at all, especially when it has a nice energy or kick to it. But some of the language to me felt very out of place for how creepy the story is. I did like the scene where Gwen calls the cops fucking fart knockers to their face mainly because that line took me by surprise. Mild spoilers. The grabber has a huge dog that's revealed later in the film. Despite the dramatic entrance that the dog has, he isn't given anything to do. All he really does is eat a steak. I found that a bit disappointing. There's one really creepy scene in the first half of the movie that rubbed me the wrong way personally. The grabber plays with Finn's hair at one point and starts touching on his face. And I just felt really icky with that part. And I more than know that that's what the filmmakers were going for. To show how creepy the grabber is. I totally get it. Like I said, it just rubbed me the wrong way. Big spoilers. And remember, I have spoilers in the title, so don't get mad at me. But I have spoilers y'all clicked on this video. In my opinion... The grabber's death could have been more exciting. Eight times out of ten, I hate when a villain dies by a fucking neck break. Whether it's a horror film or an action film, a neck break always makes me feel unsatisfied. I realize that I sound like a complete psychopath saying that. I did love how Finn got a few punches in and whooped the hell out of the grabber. That part was pretty satisfying. But I thought the grabber's overall death could have been way more brutal especially with how evil the character is. 
As many nitpicks that I have with this film, I still really enjoyed it for the consistent creepy tone, the awesome musical score, a good amount of the camera work, and the great performances. I'm going to give The Black Phone an 8 out of 10. Thank y'all for watching. It's been your boy Fro Thizzle. If there's anything that you'd like me to review, comment below. But in the meantime, subscribe for more. Peace. Thank you. Fro, I'm out.